You're now tuned in to me, 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 Oh, you know, we, stack bleed in a different era though. He'd have roughed you the fuck up. They don't. They ain't play that. Files, they ain't play that. He'd have fuck around, socked you and all that. No, I would have did what the niggas do out here now on uh, Instagram and in the streets. I would have got tough with him. Then put instead of putting pull, I'd have put the refs on him. <laughs> get him. He gonna heck and dumb. <laughs> nah, he I mean, that was. I'd have put the refs on him. That was the best way to get me out of my game. You know I mean, throw the I refs on him. Argue with the refs. Like I've never been in a fight with a player on the court in an NBA game ever. My whole career, not one. Yeah. Because niggas respect how hard I played the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here trying to win. It ain't disrespectful, but you in my way. Right. That's, and that's just what it was. It's a lot of guys that play like that in my era. See, I, I'm gonna keep it all the way real though, but you you from the era with the with the dark skinned niggas ready to game. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was joy, it was gang Payton. It was oh, that's magic, I, that's it was I used to watch. Dominique, yeah. it was Shaq. Joe Dumars, it was Shaq, yeah. it was David Robinson. Uh, David Robinson, yeah. you know you only had a, a, a only a Carl Malone was no, 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 yeah. yeah the only Carl one light skinned nigga was able to slip through the cracks. Yeah. Tim Duncan. It was yeah. Charles let Barkley. me get my uh, Barkley ain't win nothing. Shit, he oh, did. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is regular. No, Barkley, Barkley didn't win nothing. I'm Barkley a six put in fan, work, man. Though, he, he did, work, but he, he didn't win work. nothing. Oh, you had other players. Let me tell you something. So you I'm gonna tell you something, motherfucker. Right, told, but he put let in me work, tell you something, motherfucker. Told me a long time ago. Second place is the first fucking loser. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Barkley. I love you. Yeah. Oh, I rooted for oh, you. You had boys like Kevin Johnson. We never got to feel no confetti fall. You had Kevin Johnson. Elijah Warren. Elijah, oh, this shit was a dark skin nigga league. What about Kevin Johnson? For, he had some sneakers. No, he never won nothing. But back in the day, I you told had you sneakers. there was only one light skin oh, nigga that got back two. Back in the day, back in the day, it was sneakers. Tim Duncan. If you had sneakers back in the day, you was somebody. Facts. Man, yeah, KG, he had them Kevin Johnsons for a year. Man, you the only nigga bought them. Listen, right? Grant Hill. What I'm saying is, he never won nothing. I keep telling you, the light skin niggas didn't get off mean? back I think, then. I think, I think, I think, J Kid. Was the beginning of the Elijah Wine ain't win. I mean, uh, 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 Chase the kid uh, really kicked the door. Dominique right. Wilkins ain't winning. Yeah, that was Dirt and Whiskey one. That shit, man. <laughs> nah, nah, hey, you forgot what J Kid did no, when he got the, to New Jersey with uh, Vince Carter and Kenyon Martin back. Yeah, to they back didn't to, win that shit. <laughs> now nah, we beat them, but they was they was back to back. They went back to back. What they do? I'm gonna keep it all we real because it's a nigga out here that deserved to get all the credit. Who that? Drake. Yeah. Because yeah. the greatest thing he ever did was bringing light-skinned niggas back. I'm uh -huh. talking about he brought them niggas all the way back. When Nino Brown fucked over all the light-skinned niggas in, in, in New Jack City, light-skinned niggas was done. Yeah, he killed yeah. They was fucked over. Damn G-Money niggas, huh? Chicken, yeah. Bitches didn't even look at light-skinned niggas the same. Oh, and then did. Drake came. He Maybe set up a light skin rev 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 like revolution. Man, light-skinned niggas running this shit now. Yeah, then Steph and them man. niggas start showing off. Now look at this shit. It's a light skin NBA now. Yeah, you you know, breathe on a nigga man. too hard, you, you get fouled. Came out with that shit. Uh, tech, get him out of here. I'm, this shit crazy. I'm telling you, light skin niggas took over. Man. So basically, you saying y'all trying to say is y'all saying the NBA softer than it used to be? Oh, right? Yeah, I think wait. so. It's 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 a it's definitely a different game. It's like, a light skin game you now. You can't man. tell me that you can't name five people that play the game with the passion that Draymond Green plays with. He's not the most talented. Give me in the five league. players. Both of y'all, give me five players that could play back in the day. That could play with Dennis Rodman. They could play with Carl Malone. They could play with Clyde Drex. They could play with. Uh, give me, a, give me I'm five a, players right I'm, now. They could play I'm and go, hold their own. I'm gonna go Braun, Draymond. Yo, stop blowing shit, fucking smoking. I told you there's some freaky shit you be doing. You be trying. That was some kinky. I don't know what you be trying to do with me, man. But I ain't with that shit, man. Blowing smoke in my face and all that. That's some. That's some aphrodisiac shit, man. I don't know what's up with that, man. Go ahead, man. Go Brian, ahead, do your thing. Braun, Draymond. Uh, I would go. KD could score on anybody in any area. He's a beast. Um, I think as far as skill wise, he's probably the most skilled player I ever seen, and and he ain't soft. Kyrie Irving, and my f last player would be Russell Westbrook. He's a dog. He can play in any era. Now he's a fucking animal. Now I definitely got to give Westbrook that. I agree with you on Durant and. <coughs> And uh, what about my man the and, and LeBron, my nephew uh, Tatum? I, 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 um, I would have to go more of a. You can't pick nobody that's on his list. Like for me, I think when you can shoot as good as Steph, it don't fucking matter whatever you was in. No question, no question. 
Because that nigga would have been lighting niggas up from 85,000 feet. Yeah, it's, it's so, about 15, 20 people that can make the list, but you gave me five. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I, I think that he could have played. I think he would have did actually good in the era because when you can shoot from that far, the game just opens up for you. Of the whole lane, everything opens up for you. But I definitely, definitely, without a doubt, believe that Damian Lillard could have played in that era. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know what I mean? Damian Gillard. You know, I, I could have made it in that era. You know? <laughs> Shout out to my man. You know what I mean? But uh, there's not too many motherfuckers in the league that nah, could have. You got to understand. What about the, my man? Because you got to understand. What about Giannis? Giannis could. Yeah, Giannis definitely could. Yeah, Giannis could. It's about 15, 20. What about Luca? I think Luca could. Luca, big body. Luca, I don't think Luca would uh, average as much as he average and do the things that he do. But. I think he definitely could have played and he would have got his shit off. Skill wise, I agree with that. But I want I've never seen nobody slam Luca to the fold. I ain't never seen nobody, you know what I'm saying, really try Luca that way. And it, it might not never happen, but you know what I'm saying? You get you <laughs> back was getting, in the day, you, you was, was getting, getting tried, bro. They was trying you. You, you gotta understand, bro. <laughs> they was trying you back in that era. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Even a little bit before my time, right before I came in. They was trying you. Yeah, and they was pinch your ass. That's no, why Dennis Rodman. You Rodman, come through that lane, they gonna try you, bro. Dennis Rodman pinch your ass. Rough you up and all that fit, get physical. They don't even rough nobody up no more. Why man. you be talking about pinching the ass? No, man. I'm just saying that's what he done. That's man. what he done. He it's was, a different game. Though. It was it's a mind a game. game when pinching joint, talk, be whispering in the ear. That was his style. That was he was a legend. Like he could have said that. You can't say that. I'm 20 telling years, you what man. happened. Just be a star at your role, but you know. Yeah, that's my like. I, my game was like Rodman. It was rough. It was filled. You know what I mean? Just throw you off your game, man. man. You got a rough basketball game. game. You do rob me. You just talk about you roughing and filling niggas up. I, you know, I grab no, no, niggas. no. You got to, you got to throw people off. <laughs> oh, that was your way of throwing yeah, niggas. Throw that was off. your tactic. Yeah, that been my tactic. Get Ooh, my so you know, a lot of times when people do stuff like that, that's the cover up for lack of skill. No, Rodman has skill. He his game like mine. We had I grab. No, I'm saying we talking about you. We talking about Rodman. Well, how many they last game? Robin is a Hall of Famer. Right, yeah. You ain't seen me rough that big boy up. He was no, a you wrestler. Was on, you was on some Ben Simmons shit. What you, you do in the big three? Points, what did you no do in the big three? In like the big three, hold fouls. up, hold, hold, hold. In the big three, hold up. Let me say Gil this. Gil was killing this dude. I had a, a, a WFF WWF wrestler, and I and I roughed him up and broke him. He didn't get no points. And how many points you had? Uh, I ain't had no points. I wasn't there for no Gil points. Gil was killing. I wasn't there for points. I was there all right, all right, for, right. for, you know, I was distraction trying Getting to throw a star on your role. Yeah. He like, I was there to grind on a wrestler. <laughs> Did y'all win? Yeah, yeah we, we won. Oh, shit. <laughs> MVP, nigga. MVP, I nigga. I got the defensive player of the game. Shout yeah. out to motherfucking NLE, NLE Chaba, a Barbecue Big Chi, Shout out Q, Big Three. Shout out to Big Three. Shout out to Tony Drake. Drake. You know what I mean? Hold on. Monster. Before we go any further, hey, this episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam, Amsterdam Vodka. Now, today, we going to do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, Wild Card, and it's made with real vodka. We're not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and it come in three flavors. Original hard lemonade, classic hard punch, and this right here, lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. All right. Now, stack. You've been in the media heavy lately. Mm-hmm. Some things has been said that was out of pocket. You know, I felt as though it was out of pocket. You know, about the good brother Georgie, rest in peace to George Floyd. You know, I want to send my condolences once again to his family, to his daughter, to all of his loved ones. And you had to respond for the family. And you, and we talked, and you know, your message is always about the family. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And, and you, the spokesperson for the family. First and foremost, how did you feel when you heard the distasteful shit 
that Kanye said, that Ye said? Uh, I would. I mean. I, I was bothered by it, you know what I'm saying? I think I was more, I got even more, by, more bothered by it when Roxanne called me. Uh, Roxanne is Gianna's mother. Um, that's who I've been speaking for. That's who I've been with and helping and representing the whole time. Not, uh, not uh, just, just Gianna and Roxanne, you know what I'm saying? The family and um, Roxanne and Gianna had different lawyers the whole time during the whole court process of trying to get the uh, cops convicted. So, you know what I'm saying? The family, I never knew. I don't know nobody on the family side. Me and Georgia was always in the streets. You know what I'm saying? The only person I know from his side is his two older sisters and um, his nephew, Wu. Um, I knew Roxanne through Georgie, and me and him always talked about our daughters because we had daughters the same age. Gianna and Scott the same age. So... My relationship, I'm just going to get a little, a little history on my relationship with Georgie. Um, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas, which is an hour from Third Ward, Texas, Houston. Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend of ours that they used to hustle with, rest in peace, his name was Tello. And um, he had family in Port Arthur as well. And he and he connected, you know, the the connection between Third Ward and Port, and Port Arthur where the hustling connection was together. You know what I mean? We made a lot of money with our, our projects in, in uh, CUNY Homes, Third Ward. So he brought Georgie down on the park while I was playing basketball at in the hood. He was like, man, I, well, first he said, man, I got a homeboy that looked just like you. Y'all might have the same dad. I'm like, yeah, right, nigga. I'm just thinking they cracking jokes in the hood. You know what I mean? The next day, or maybe a couple of weeks, he came back. And as soon as I turned around, I'm like, nigga, who your daddy? Cause we looked that much alike when I first met him and we instantly called each other twin. So it got to the point where I made it to the NBA and every summer I would drive right there to third ward, get my syrup, get my weed and we'll lean and smoke all summer. We'll hang out and I enjoy my summers with him. Um, he was one of those guys that the reason why I miss him, because when you have success, you have a lot of people that abuse your relationship. You know what I mean? They call you for money for nothing. Just, just cause you got it, they abuse your yes. friendship. He protected me from that. That's why I cared. That's why I was. That's why I loved him. That's why he was my brother. That's why we cared about. Because he protected me. He didn't abuse our friendship. Right. I was there for him a, a lot of times when he was in jail. His mama needed to pay rent. Rest in peace to his mom. Um, and and things where he needed to do things. You know what I'm saying? I was able to help him at times. But I hear people say a lot. Why you Why you didn't couldn't save him from all the things he was doing? Well, if you from the areas we from, we all have family members. And we all men. So we all have our own responsibilities. And we can't tell a grown man what to do with their life. You know what I'm saying? So we're not responsible for another grown man. And sometimes when our, when our people, family members, friends, sometimes when they doing shit that don't align with what we doing, they stay away from us. They, yeah. they even hide from you. I done seen people, family members be getting high. And they don't want their people to see them like that. They hide from their family. They don't want their kids to see them. So a lot of people, they be like, they dis, you know, disconnect themselves. So you can't, you can't be in control of another Adele's life. But that too, you, you, you have your own responsibility. So, you know, with me and him not being family and not living in the same places and not being in the I same areas, my... you know what I'm saying? We, we end up, you know, going two different paths. You know, he was an athlete as well. You know what I'm saying? An a, a all-American football player. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what a lot of people don't understand is not from my areas. You can be from the same areas, but <laughs> di different opportunities – will take you two different paths. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when it all first happened, when, when Georgie, when all this first happened to Georgie, I seen all the people trying to get close to the family, get down there, be on TV, say they know Georgie and do all this, right? So my whole point was, I don't want to be nowhere around it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I can see all the people trying to be around it and get to see if they can get some money out of it for the wrong reasons, praying off these people pain. I didn't want to be nowhere around it. The whole time, the nephew Wu had texted me saying they need my help. But me, knowing how all these people running around the family and all this is going on, I'm like, man, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't even see his DM or nothing at the time. But Roxanne had reached out to me because after a press conference that they had, she said that the lawyer, one of the lawyers that told her after... 
after after they, I'm going to get them out the way, and then it's going to be about you, know, you and the golden child, talking about Gianna. And that bothered her, as it should have, because what what is your motive? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is your motive? Like, what did, what did you mean by that? So she that instantly yeah. bothered her, and she reached out to me. She was like, Steve, I need your help. I need you to help me get my own lawyers. I need you to speak for me and make sure me and Gianna is represented in the right way. I said, no problem. Whatever I got to do. But when I, when, I, when I said that, I didn't think I was going to be leading the biggest civil rights movement ever. 18 countries, 50 states. It's never been done. All protests at the same time. I never thought that I'd be risking my job, my livelihood. I never thought that my family would be getting death threats because I'm fighting to get police, a, a, a racist cop in jail. So many people hated me for doing something right. You know what I'm saying? I, I never thought all this would come, you know what I'm saying? All this would happen. But I stood tall. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, and, and, and the reason why it was easy for me, like Bun B told me, he's like, bro, everything you was built, built from, from growing up to the, to the brawl, to the shootout at the strip club, he said, everything you've been through has built you for this moment. You've always been there for your brother. So, but I didn't know the magnitude of it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, this was shit I seen in movies. Mm -hmm. The protesting, the burning buildings, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was shit that we, never, we don't see in real life. And I had no clue what I was doing, bro, but I just knew I had to stick my chest out and beat up for Gianna because I know wholeheartedly if that would have happened to me, G would have did the same thing. Right. And I commend you for being there, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. for, your, for, for your brother. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, you know, people that's in your situation that have been like, man. I, I got too much to lose. I got too much to lose, man. Yeah. And people don't look at it like that. And I don't even want the publicity like that. You know what I mean? I don't even did want you to have, Did you have uh, anybody come at you like, yo, fall back? Try to get you to fall back because of business or anything? Everybody. Everybody. Except mm. Showtime. I lost a lot of money behind that shit. Showtime stood tall behind me through it all. You know what I'm saying, but every a lot of I, I lost I lost a lot of relationships, a lot of stuff because I decided to stand up for my brother, and I don't regret it though, because I'm still I'm getting blessed more afterwards. You know what I'm saying, and I'm and I'm blessed to say that because so many blessings came after that, and I've seen so many people try to pay off, uh, pray off Roxanne's pain and be around him and trying to get money from her. I'm proud to say that, bro. Everything that I did and put my life online, I've, I've never taken a dime from her and can stand on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people in this whole thing for George Floyd out for money. Can't nobody say they gave me a dime for nothing about this, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that, that means something to me, bro, because had getting justice for my brother, I never thought I'd see somebody I know go through that, dog. And the world seen it. You know what I'm saying? And, and to hear Kanye say this and to have Gianna ask me, uncle, why are they talking, why are they talking about my daddy again? Like, he didn't have to bring none of that up. And that's my main problem with Kanye. Don't, don't read something and then come bring it up in the interview or, or see something because you saw it. You don't know if it's true or not. The cop admitted to it in jail. I mean, in court. He's in jail because he admitted to it. So obviously he's guilty for killing him. If the cop admitted to it. Listen, man, to all you conspiracy theorists, motherfuckers, we ain't no actors, bro. We live real lives. We really lost somebody, fam. We really lost a homeboy. We really lost a family member. So all these conspiracy theories and shit, that shit whack. And I'm going to always stand up for my people and my brother. You know what I'm saying? We real people. And for, and for people to say these things and, 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 protect, people, and protect people just because... Because they got money, that shit is weak. Y'all not real. Y'all not real. And it shows money control y'all. Because y'all standing on that side. You can't tell me if me and Gilly walked outside with a Confederate flag jacket that y'all would be still supporting us. Facts. So I don't want to hear that shit. I'm always defending my brother. I don't care what all the other shit he talking about. I don't care. You dig what I'm saying? I don't care. But keep Georgia name out your mouth, dog. You have no reason to be speaking on the dead. I don't know when that became cool anyway. You know what I'm saying? We just don't do that. I, 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 I'm under the old law. We don't speak on dead people. That shit, is, that shit ain't never been cool in my book. 
I, uh, all, as a culture, we all love Kanye. A black billionaire, we love to see it. But I'd rather see it without demeaning your own people. I'd rather see it being solid. You know what I'm saying? Everything I say today, I know nobody can go back and pull up nothing in my, in, in my file and demean my character nowhere in my life from growing up in Port Arthur to now. Nothing. And it be facts. Nobody. Because I know I stand solid. I always have. And it bothered her. So by it bothering her, it bothered me. So I had to respond. You know what I'm saying? I, I, y'all know me on my page. I show everybody love. I don't talk about people. I don't get in other people's business. I never said nothing about him and the things he was doing. I don't agree with a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the same mm-hmm. time, when you speak on somebody who we love, who we lost in a tragic way for the world to see, and for his daughter to ask about it again, yeah, we're going to respond. As a man, I'm going to respond. If you, do- if you stop talking about Georgia, I have no problem with you. But anybody speaking on his name, you're going to have to see me. In some type of way. I ain't no gangster, I ain't no thug, but I'm a man and I love my family and I love my twin. And that's just what it is. I feel you, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and as a brother, I sit here and I see the pain that come on your your face. I see the the, the authenticity and the way you express your love for his family and, and, and for him. And, you know, at the end of the day, this shit wasn't cool. You know, I, I, you know, I say, I say, I say how I feel, man. And, you know, the shit wasn't cool. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to his family. I want to just send my condolences again to, to his family, you know, because that was some tragic shit. That that's, this is not no, no play play shit. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm from the era where we don't speak on the dead. We let the dead rest easy. Mm -hmm. We let the dead. You feel what I'm saying? This is somebody who didn't get a chance to live his life out to full potential. He didn't get a chance to die from natural causes. Hey, but let, let me touch, since we don't talk about Roxanne, too. Like, a lot of people don't even know. Roxanne, you've never seen her talk. You don't see her do interviews and try to be famous. They still grieving. They still grieving. Rock, and people, half the people don't know what Roxanne has been through. Imagine, bro. Imagine his only child and her mother... And his older sister going into the funeral, and they don't have nowhere to sit. We got a Debo. We got a Debo for them, uh, some place to sit. How is that possible? Damn. You see what I'm saying? That shit don't. It don't sound. This it, 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 it don't sound right, right? How do how they? How, how are they not in the whole family brigade to get in the funeral? Or how they not? How they don't have a seat? Uh, uh, um. um a, a section for them to sit down. His daughter, his older sister. We got a Debo for them to have some, Debo the funeral for them to have somewhere to sit, bro. But this the shit that they 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 was going through. You know what I'm saying? And I and I ain't, I ain't talking about the family. Whoever was advising the family was all about money. You know what I'm saying? And once Roxanne decided to get another lawyer, they just disowned her and cut her off. Didn't didn't care about the child or nothing no more. Didn't care about the murder. Nothing. <laughs> Didn't care about you that. See what I'm saying? And, and but I'm saying this is what she was going through the whole time. Damn. And, and and she still hasn't spoke about it. You know what I'm saying? And she and she probably won't because she's still grieving. And for this shit to come back up for her daughter to be asking her about this shit again, dog, it's sad, bro. It's sad. It's super sad. And like I just spoke, like I spoke about on my Instagram, man. It's you know, it's sad that. You know, you you get these, you know, entertainers or anybody, man, that die and people will film it. You'll see a person out there shot that's still breathing and somebody will be filming it instead of trying to help them. It's fortunate that somebody did have a camera out for George Floyd when he was still alive. Mm-hmm. And, we, and you was able to see what happened. So, you know... It's just it's just a tragic situation, man, and you know it's it's, it's sad that you know some of the, some of these kids and wives and uncles and aunts and grandmothers' last memory 
is going to be their loved ones laying on the ground, man. Yeah, that's some sad shit, man. And while we talking, shout out to his nephew Wu. He kept all that shit together. He represented the family strong, bro. I mean, and he's still grieving. I just seen him in Vegas, like. Shout out to Wu, man. Shout out to Wu. That responsibility that was thrown on him to be the voice of the family, to stand up and keep the family together and everything together on that side. Like, I got I got to give him his props, man, because he stood tall. And that's not an easy task with everything that was going on in that time. Right. So, yeah, you just can't fly, at the, fly off the limb and slay shit like that, bro, and, and not have no facts. And, and that's a big problem with social media. People just say shit, and if it get reposted a thousand times, people start believing it. You know what I'm saying? With no proof or no facts. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Right. So we, we gotta get away from that, man. No, like like you you like the reality is the world we live in now, everybody is perfect until they do some fuck shit. You know, I think we all in our life, we do like like, you know, motherfucker out here used to be a criminal robbing and stealing doing shit. And uh so it's like ain't nobody perfect. So you know shit do happen, people do do shit. And uh we living in a real extreme Lead critical fucking world where everything is under a microscope. So the best advice I can always give people is this. You got to be real mindful of what you do and what you say in this world and how it will affect others, whatever it may be, you know? And just know that uh, I know freedom of speech is freedom of everything, you know, but at the same time, I think we just got to be mindful and the power that we have, the voices that we may have, and the influence that we might have over others when we saying do shit, but everybody fuck up, you know? Right. Because we humans and we gonna fuck up some more, even if you is a certain age, you know, we gonna. I, under- I had to understand this early in life, in my, my early 30s. I had to understand that I be expecting too much from niggas. I be expecting niggas to do the shit that I would do when these niggas ain't me. Mm-hmm. I'd be expecting niggas to think the way that I would think when these niggas ain't me. These niggas ain't experienced half the shit I've experienced. These niggas ain't dealt with the women I dealt with. These niggas ain't got the money I got to. These niggas ain't took trips. These niggas ain't did 10% of the shit I did. So I can't expect a motherfucker who's confined to a certain block radius or a certain way of thinking to understand the way that I think. So... I had to start easing up on motherfuckers because I would look at the majority of these niggas like goofies. And I just got to understand that they wasn't raised how I was raised. They 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 see things in a different way. Even though it's a goofy way, they see the And I, I got to be mindful of that because I was expecting too much of niggas. You feel what I'm saying? And I had to realize that Niggas ain't me. Niggas ain't niggas don't think how I think. Nigga, you you feel what I'm saying? Like prime example, right? I got I got I got I got a a a homie. You feel what I'm saying? He was going through some 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 relationship shit. And he got two homies on the phone. He got me and he got his other homie on the phone. And the advice that this homie gave him about his family and his wife and his the shit was unbelievable i'm like dog what the fuck are you talking about man don't do that stupid shit don't you ever do no shit like that but it's like it's really people that think like this yeah you feel what i'm saying like it it blew my mind but it's like i don't want to put my people's business out there but it's like it's really people that think like this and then you understand that's what make the world go round, man that everybody's different, man. Yes. So for me, you know, I, I I I stop expecting so much from niggas, man. So I'm less disappointed when when I don't get the results that I think that I'm gonna get. You know what I mean? It, it, it ain't rocket science though. Just get the re- same respect that you want back. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't rocket science, man. Yeah. See, I lead with respect. Yeah. It ain't, respect, it ain't respect, hard. respect, it ain't, respect. But you know, you know how much energy it take to muster up and thought it take. To hate or to 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 figure out what to type on somebody page to hate on them, that takes energy and effort. It takes no effort to say what's up, bro, and hug somebody. Right. No effort, but it takes all the effort in the world to muster up some hate for somebody. Bro, you gotta understand. Y'all got too much time. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Y'all, y'all got too much time on y'all hands, yeah. bro. And y'all wonder why y'all ain't got nothing going on. 
Because mm-hmm. y'all are too busy worrying about what somebody else got going on. I'm, I'm talking about Stack. We got with Barstool, right? They raised all this money. We got with Barstool. We said, the black people not getting none of this money. Barstool said, Kelly, Wallow, the, they not applying. They not applying for the money. Gilly, we want to give everybody. Matter of fact, we'll allot the money to y'all guys. Y'all push the program. Y'all get them to apply. We'll deliver the money. Sick. We went and gave out $4 million to minority businesses. Some of these people never got, was never given nothing. I reposted it on my page. And niggas was in the comments hating. And they ain't gave away shit. You don't give. You ain't gave away candy on your so called Halloween holiday. <laughs> so I said your so called. So you gotta understand that life is fucked up when you could give away when you could do some shit that motherfuckers never seen done before. Like they never seen nobody popping up at all these places giving niggas money, and niggas still was hating. Yeah, that's crazy. So for us. It's just some things just be unbelievable, but you just be like, you know what, man? We not here. To, to, we here to try to help people better their lives. We ain't here to get cheered on. Ain't we, in competition we with nobody. Right, we ain't. We not. So if a motherfucker want to hate on some positive shit that we doing, then they in a fucked up space. Mm-hmm. You know, life got them in a the butt naked headlock. You know, I ain't, I'm not allowing life to have me in a butt naked headlock where my energy fucked up and I'm just some positive shit. I turn into some negative shit that just, that, that can never happen. So for us, we understand that, man. Hey, this is your marketing team. Let them motherfuckers work. Let them work. Feel what I'm saying? But man, I, you know, you want to come and, 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 you know, you know, speak on the behalf of the Floyd family, you know, now that we got past that, good brother. I got some questions for y'all because right. y'all, y'all, y'all too. I'm speaking on behalf of Roxanne and Gianna, yeah, not Roxanne, the yeah, family. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, th- yeah. yeah, you, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say this though. Y'all two uh, basketball fanatics, I want to say to ask you this. It's brought to you by Sirius XM. It's your home for the holidays with a festive lineup of channels featuring classic cows to contemporary hits plus year-end countdown to ring in the New Year's. 20-plus holiday channels available on the Sirius XM app, including Jingle Jams, which plays R&B and hip-hop holiday music from the 90s to now. I'm talking about from the 90s to now. Like, I'm loving it right now. I'm just jamming. I got all type of stuff on. I'm playing. I'm, I'm all over the place with the, you know, I'm just, oh, oh, the, the app, listen, the app is amazing. I'm just all over the place and you need to be all over the place. I'm talking about it's going down. You want to ring in the new year, right? Listen, subscribe now and get your first three months. I'm talking about your first three months for free. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You getting it for free. Three months for free. Sirius XM app. Visit Sirius XM dot com slash million dollar offer that's m-i-l-l-i-o-d-o-l-l-a-z-o-f-f-e-r to sign up what are you waiting for offer details apply serious xm this episode of the million dollars worth of game is brought to you by owens mixers just add owens to kick up your pre-game at night with a better tasting cocktail owens mixer is the easiest way to make high quality bar style cocktails that will get you right back to the party. Vodka, tequila, or gin over ice and just add Owens. That's all you gotta do is add Owens. Owens makes it pair perfectly. I'm talking about this right here appears perfectly to create the best American new vodka, cranberry, margarita, transfusion, and more. Visit owensmixer.com for more cocktails and where to buy nationwide, including clubs, restaurants, and arenas. Just add Owens Mixer to create great party cocktails. Easy to make, easy to buy. Go to owensmixer.com, Amazon, or GoPuff. Owens Mixer. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Get the party started with Owens Mixer, and it's just like that. 
both of y'all, who the top five softest motherfuckers in the NBA <laughs> <laughs> right now and back in the day? I'm just asking because the only reason I'm asking is because, you know. I only got one. The softest nigga in the NBA by far is Ben Simmons. You be riding Ben, man. No, bro. You be but, fucking hating no, on no, Ben. No, 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 no. I know. When you see a motherfucker with so much talent, right, and his only demon is himself, his confidence, come on, man. Like, There's no way you a 6'10 point guard, bro, and you shoot three times a game. At six, I play basketball. At 6'10", without a jumper, my job is to always attack, live in the paint, create double teams, and at 6'10", I can deliver any type of fucking pass that I want to deliver. Over top of niggas, behind the back, motherfucking this way, that way. So my only job is to fucking attack. If don't nobody step up, I'm laying your ass the fuck up because I'm 6'10", bro. And I weigh 240 fucking pounds. And if y'all double team me, I'm dishing out to a wide open shooter. This shit is not hard, man. So at the end of the day, when a motherfucker don't want to play the game he love because he got into an argument, a disagreement with some niggas in the locker room. Come on, man. The fuck out of here. Ain't nothing stopping me from going on that motherfucking court except for a toy ACL, nigga. Ain't nothing going to stop me from getting my fucking money for a whole fucking year because of my feelings. Nigga, please. Who, who, who is your five? Soft, right now. I ain't even got five. I only got one, nigga. I, would, I wouldn't say soft because I ain't playing, So, I, but I would say not living up to my expectations. Who? Mm, yeah, that's a good one. That's nice. Anthony Davis. AD? And, and he's not living up to my expectations championship-wise. Like, at one point, we was com- uh, comparing AD to Tim Duncan. AD don't be on the floor like we expect him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't been taking care of his body like we think he should. And they haven't been a championship caliber team like we expected when he got with LeBron. And definitely having Russ now and having a new coach in Darvin Ham. Like, what's up? I mean, I think AD is hmm. dominant. I love him. I, I just think he's going to stay on the floor. You know I, I, mean? I, I expected more, you know what I'm saying, at this point. The years he's been with the Lakers, and at this point, I expected more from AD. That's all I'm saying. What about the, okay, so how do you feel about what Russ is going through right now? Well, I mean, I love the fact that um, he got everybody back on his dick. No homo. Um, because, uh, well, shall I say pause? Um, everybody was hating on him. He can't shoot. They need to trade him. Russ is done after this year, da, da, da. He's he he he's he turns into he's always been a professional, but people just trying to find reasons to hate on him. the huddle the huddle thing, which he's been doing his whole career, all that, right? Mm-hmm. So he comes off the bench, he embraces his role off the bench, gets when they first win and balls out, shocks the world. Why is that surprising? Right. That's surprising because y'all been trying to paint this picture of this man like he's not a pro or like he's not compared to Elgin Baylor when it comes to triple doubles of all time mm-hmm. in the NBA, like, remember who we talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? So stop this. Don't be so quick to write this man off or disrespect him. And I'm glad that he showed them that he's a true professional by coming off the bench and doing what he needs to do to and, and, and lead the team to that first win of the season. So uh, I think he's, he's handling like a G. He ain't really been saying too much in the media. Uh, he's going to let his play do his talk. But if you know anything about basketball and if you watch the game and if you played the game, you know everybody go through droughts. The best go through droughts. Right. The best go through ups and downs where they got to find their shot. You've seen some of the best. Kobe and them go get in the gym after, I mean, going to the gym right after games. Right. Nigga, I seen Ron Artest get on treadmills. I'm talking about and run 36 minutes after games just because he got tired. Right. And he mm-hmm. felt like the reason why he the, uh, the person he was guarding got the better of him because he wasn't in shape. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? People put that work in, man, but people are human. Right. Mm. Uh, for me, you know, I just think, for me, I, I just think the media, every so year, two years, they just pick a certain group of players. Mm-hmm. Pick on. And they just riding them motherfuckers to the ground. 
Like you got to think two years ago was Carmelo. Mm. Oh, he was done. He's done. He's this. He's that. He's wrong. Carmelo come right back. He balling. Doing his thing. So, you know, I just think right now it was Russ turn. You know what I mean? Every day you wake up, they trying to come up with a take of how Russell Westbrook did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Fuck the fact that he one of the hardest playing motherfuckers when he on the court. He giving it his all. He always bring the energy. He always bring the attitude. He's obviously a team player because he's average triple doubles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, excuse me, I said Elgin Baylor. I meant Oscar Robinson. Oscar Robinson, yeah. Yeah, Oscar Robinson. Excuse yeah, you me. You know what I mean? So I just feel like, you know, the media, you know, that every so often they, you know, every couple years they got their players that they're going to try to ride into the ground and, you know, they're going to first take them to death. Mm-hmm. Every day, every day is going to be his fault. They're going to make up some shit. Russell Westbrook shot 8 for 16, but the last minute of the game, he had this turnover. Was Russell Westbrook the reason why they lost? So yeah, you that's, like, why it's, that's why it's imperative fuck. that we have shows like this where we can control our own narrative. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, especially when you got guys that actually played the game and know the ups and downs. Well, you got a guy that played the game. I mean, you know what I'm saying? that's what yeah. I'm saying. You, got, you know, you got other guys with other, <laughs> with other shows that played the game, too. No, I'm but, thinking you talk about us. So that's why I said, no, you got a guy. I played the game. Yeah, yeah, one guy. One I guy. played the yeah, game yeah. in jail, for real. That's when I had my real my that, real stats. That's when you had your run? Yeah, yeah. I had a vicious run. Yeah. We ran a couple of tournaments. So, basically, so, so, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get this clear. So, basically, what you're trying to say in a nutshell, if you was free, you would have been lead. Oh, without a doubt. I'd have been playing this. I, I probably have been playing for like, I probably have went to like Seton Hall hey, School, hey, like Seton Hall, uh, Penn play, State. Man, he would have been playing for the uh, post Villanova. office league. Get the fuck out of here. I'd have came through there. Probably have been playing for like the, you know. The, you know how the post office got their little league where they get together playing top on five, Saturdays. I'd have, been, I'd have been playing for Seattle uh, Supersonics back oh, in the day. Top 10, top 15? Where you think you want to drive? I probably have went like 25. 25? Okay. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have got in. I slid in there. Yeah. Without a doubt, I'd have slid in. Uh, you know, my game was sort of like uh, Terry the Hair. Remember him back in the day, you see him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we nah, had a game, man. Yeah, nice, had a similar game. Uh, what up, T? Uh, some people say my game was also like Calvert Cheney over there in Indiana Hoosier okay. with Bob Knight and them. Lefty. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I had a different I had a different style yeah, of game. The fuck, your shit was like John Cheney's when he was no, 80. He was, he was a legendary coach. <laughs> uh, they wanted me a Temple, the too. The fuck out They wanted me a Temple. Calvert uh, Cheney. It was brought to you by Mint Mobile, what I am using now. You could be anywhere. The service is good. It's strong. I'm talking about right now, this holiday season, the best deal in wireless could only be found with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile, that best deal. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, I'm talking about any three-month plan, you're getting another three months for free. I'm out here. It's clear. It's working. I, you know, the bar is up. I'm talking about everything is right with Mint Mobile. That's why I'm outside and I'm doing this right now so you can see what's going on. Mint Mobile is just that. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM. While saving tons, I'm talking about you saving tons, tons of phone plan starting at just, you're saving tons on the phone plan starting at just $15. Mint Mobile is the best offer this year for a limited time by any three-month plan, and you're getting three months, three more months free. I'm talking about all plans with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data delivered on nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly eSIM with the eSIM. This is easy, man. Or you need a new device? For a limited time, get six months free service when you buy a selected device in a plan. Mint Mobile is not playing no games. Stop playing. Right now, for a limited time, buy any three months plan and get three months free by going to mintmobile.com slash game. That's mintmobile.com slash game. And listen, cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com. Dot com. Stop playing games. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we give you the news you can use. We give you that game, man. We get you up off the couch. He used to be a couch warrior. So we bring, you know, entrepreneurs on here to get y'all some game that y'all can utilize with little to no money. Take it to the next level and get up off your mom's couch like we did for him. That, that, now, don't just throw me under man, the bus. You was a fucking basement man Chris. warrior. Listen, all right, whatever. We got my man Chris. He got them stock. Listen, he teaching y'all them options, man, the stock options. He's on a whole nother level, but he do his thing a little bit different. 
I'm talking about, and, I, and he's going to give you a free course, And but I need you to do it. I need you to text CYC to 833-474-4174. 4174 That's CYC. He's going to give you a free course in the game, but you got a different approach about. But before we get into that, tell us about your background, where you came from, and how you got into the game. Yeah, so I... Uh Growing up, I used to throw I used to throw a parties, events, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I used to bring artists down to Rock Hill, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I brought uh, people like Yo Gotti back before he blew up, right? Mm-hmm. I brought Pastor Troy, Yola the Great, yeah. uh, Gucci Mane, all those type of guys down to Charlotte, C- uh, CIAA Weekend, all that good stuff, right? He was a party animal. Huh? Yeah, we was trying to get it in, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we was trying to get it in. But uh, the most I took me on a whole different journey, and then he brought me to, uh, he brought me to this world, and that's where I'm at right now. So you like this world better than promoting, huh? Oh, I love it better, right? Because when I used to promote parties, I might give, we may give Gotti or Gucci Man thirty, sixty thousand dollars mm. If somebody shoot the club up at 10.30, I lose everything. Mm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? How, how often does somebody shoot the club up? Oh, all my parties got shut down. Damn. <laughs> that nigga just attracted violence. Right, God I mean, was like, they, they, they used to get shut down just because the, uh... <laughs> God said he ain't no good promoter. We don't need him. We ain't fucking with him. Security, I don't know how they used to let people get in like that, but it, it happened, man, but... Uh, when we brought major artists down, we used to be we used to be loaded up with security though. So they, sometimes they went through and sometimes they did. But who introduced you to the stock game? So I was in uh, me and my wife was in Myrtle Beach. We was in Myrtle Beach. We was uh, at the bar, and uh, this guy came to us and said, "Hey, you want to do this wine tasting?" So we went over to the wine tasting, and a couple came and said they were on vacation for eight weeks. First thing first, I said, I need to find out how they on vacation for eight weeks. That's two months. That's, Damn. I mean, that's a long time, right? So uh, I threw out my trucking company that I had at the time, told him I want to do some HVAC, and he didn't bite. But the couple that we came down there with, he said, man, I want to learn the stock market. From that moment, his face lit up. For three hours, he was buying us drinks, telling us about stock options. He said, Chris, when you get home, call me. I'm going to set your screen up for you. I called him. He set my screen up for me. From that day forward, I've been locked in. What's the screen? Basically, the trading chart screen. He showed me how to set my my charts up and all that good stuff. He threw me in the ocean, told me to go swim. And, I, and you've been in the game ever since. No, I started drowning first though because I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I like <laughs> right? that. I like that. You, you know, telling the truth. Just being real. You how know, much I started money drowning you first. I probably lost all together. I lost about thirty thirty thousand dollars. I say starting off, honestly, and then I probably lost some more money all together. Put it like at sixty two thousand dollars starting off. So, so in this free course, you basically gonna be once again text that number eight three three four seven. 474-4174 text CYC and he's going to give you the free game and so basically you're going to be educating people on all the pitfalls you had and what the yeah. routes not to take the thing about it is I'm an honest person so I'm telling you I came into this thing I lost $60,000 right mm-hmm. I lost thirty at first then I put some more in there I lost another thirty, then I, I'm down 60000 but the thing about it was I realized if I can make this money if I learn what I'm doing I can make a whole bunch of money <laughs> you see what I'm saying yeah. so I learned it I mean I spent hours 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 learning this trade because at first I didn't want to pay nobody to teach me mm-hmm. well, how long was it before you before your wife told you you keep fucking this money up yeah, I'm gonna kick you on out on this man. trade I'm gonna trade your goofy yes. ass let's do like get you out of here let's say this I ain't tell everything <laughs> I ain't tell everything <laughs> oh, you, know? she, you tell I told her, her yourself. I told her after the fact after the fact oh, I you told, told her, her you know you know, you know the light's yeah. still on everything we good right <laughs> yeah. he, he waited till he was back up <laughs> baby you knew he was getting the fix right I had this fucked up everything we had. <laughs> I had to throw a party, <laughs> right? I had to th- I had to go back to club, shoot him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what? It's, give us some game on you know what's the methods of how you trade and how you make that paper. So the the reason why I was losing money because I didn't understand the lingo. I didn't grow up from, I didn't come through a household that talked about the stock market ever in life. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? At our table, when we was at the house, we talked about football, sports. Mm-hmm. That's really about it. But so I had to break the stock market down into my language. So I mm-hmm. teach the stock market using R&B music and using relationships. Oh, who, who you use? What type of R&B music? <laughs> I use Tevin Campbell, New Edition, Ed Sheeran, Jagged Edge, Chris Brown. What about R. Kelly? You use R. Kelly? Nah, me and R. Kelly, I don't, I don't use R. That's Kelly. That's just told me that, you know, he, him and R. Kelly used to live together and stuff the like that. Fuck that. Out of here. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, he used to live, he used to live with R. Man, you ain't used to live with R. Kelly. You told me you was living with R. Kelly, you you living with R. Kelly when I was I in jail. I ain't tell you no shit. Like, <laughs> you said you was living in, like, you know what I mean? You was living in. Stop fucking playing. You was living in the closet. Don't put that mustard on. <laughs> I'm just saying, he had a closet that was like a bedroom. You said he had a nice joint, I was living in it. I'm just, I ain't gonna put it all out there, but yeah. that's what you told me when I was in jail. You was living with R. Kelly. But Whatever you, I'm just saying that was just like it's guy. That's dope, man. Yeah, but whatever. That's, that's I mean, dope. he gonna say that's dope. See, what do you mean that's dope? Just saying, you know, I don't know. 
You was living with R. It's cool, man. I'm not <laughs> judging you. I don't know what <laughs> happened and what y'all was into. But I'm just saying you was living with R. But you could, you know, uh, uh, why did you choose them artists? And, and explain to us why you use the artists and how do that connect? So the thing about it is I use it, I start off telling everybody about the psychology of trading, right? So a quick overview of the psychology of trading is this. When you first see the stock market, it's like Tevin Campbell, can we talk? He said he wanted to talk to this lady. He, he saw her. She was pretty. He wanted to introduce himself to her. It's the same thing with the stock market. You have to introduce yourself Stop, to the stock no market. Minute. That's why I'm saying you should have used R. Kelly because when R. Kelly first seen him at the show, he said, can we talk? <laughs> it was backstage and some other shit happened. But go ahead. <laughs> so that, so that's, that's stage one, right? So yeah. stage one, can we talk? Kevin Townsend. Uh, stage two is Ed Sheeran, right? Ed Sheeran has a song, I think, believe that song called "Perfect." Like he, she's the perfect lady. So when you see the stock market, like, this thing is a perfect thing. I want it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a shiny object and all that good stuff, right? So y'all get into a relationship and you start dating. You start learning about the stock market, and then you go to stage three, which is the most important stage of the psychology of trading. Stage three is when you're in a relationship with somebody and you have the good days, the bad days, the good days, the bad days. I can't stand you. You gotta go sleep on the couch. No, you go sleep on the couch because you out all that stuff right but you got to ask yourself new edition stage three can you stand the rain you see what i'm saying can you stand the rain and when you're trading and you're going you're winning one day losing one day winning one day losing one day and you lose 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 but then you win 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 and your money's inconsistent right but then if you if you stand through the rain you get to stage four stage four is baby face Every time I close my eyes, I, I thank think of the you. Lord that I got That's you. Because every time you wake up in the morning, you see that stock market, you be like, thank you, Father, y'all, because this is amazing. <laughs> you see that's what I'm crazy. saying? So that's what uh, that's the psychology of trade. That's kind of how I break it You down. still at the point where you be having rainy, rainy days, though, where you got this shit down? I'm chilling with Babyface. Me and Babyface, I'm on, I'm on repeat. Me and Babyface riding. I got my, I got my lady on the pasture side. So, we riding. So you're going to give them some game to where, so where's though, the people that come on and they get your course, they ain't going to have as many rainy days exactly. as you. Exactly. And that's the whole purpose of it. That's why I be honest with people and tell them, you know, this is what I lost up front because I was, I was being hard hit and they want to learn from anybody. Right. Then then it's crazy what you can make happen when your life on the line, right? Oh, definitely. We're yeah. talking with my wife. Yeah, you, you <laughs> fucked that money up. You, you had to, money up. Had to go tell her. <laughs> Got to bounce back, right? So, 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 so if they come and get with you, they get the free course. Once again, if you want this free course, you need to text CYC to 833-474-4174, 833-474-4174. CYC, you're going to get a free course. He's going to give you the game. Now, in this course, how much money do they need to start off? So when you, I tell people when you start off trading, first come in with no money because you can paper trade with fake money, right? But if you want to start trading real money, I say start with at least $500. And with $500, we're going to practice risk management. That's the most important thing, risk management, learning how to not lose money so you can make money. That's what I'm talking about. So where you at now? And uh, how much you know? How much you be doing? I don't want to ask you. So you on, nah, you good. On a monthly basis, I'm anywhere from ten to twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Right, ten to twenty thousand. The reason why I do that because I know myself. So I don't want to go out there and trade with a hundred thousand dollar account. I want to make sure I manage my manage myself because I practice risk management. Because if I got a hundred thousand dollar account out there, I'm trading with. I mean, I might mess around and put the whole thing, you know, put the whole thing on. It's going down. Oh, it's going up. So I manage myself and I do ten to twenty thousand uh, dollars. Basically, a month for trading stock options. And and, and, and how long you be, be realistic? They come in this course. How long is it going to take them to really be in the game? Like, how yeah. long would you think it would take them to start heating up and shit? So, I'm going to take them through a whole journey. i just be completely honest with you. You're not going to jump. If you think you're going to jump into this and become this amazing trade overnight, you're kidding yourself. This stuff takes time. You, you've got to put your emotions in this thing because it's an emotional roller coaster. But the thing about it, I tell everybody, it take, might take you about three to six months to really get the feel. I've seen some people take a whole year. Right, but this is a skill set that you can learn for the do the rest of your life. But I've seen people come in and do it in two months. All right, now no. listen. Mm -hmm. I, I think I got a recommendation. I think you should add some more songs. <laughs> What's like, because if you're going in and you're trying to you trying to produce with the stock market, uh -huh. him and R. Kelly favorite song. R. Kelly used to have a song, right? And every time Gilly be in the car, he'd sing it to Gilly. It was called Half on a Baby. So how do you, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, how do you incorporate that, right? No bullshit. How do you incorporate that? It's cool. All right, they had, they had some thing, whatever they had going on. But how do you how do you incorporate it with you and the stock market go half on the baby? You know what I mean? Throw that in there. You know what I mean? I'm giving you a new, I'm giving no, you some game. You. How like could y'all go, you know what I mean? That was that shit too. See, I tell you, R. Kelly sung it to him personally. Baby, <laughs> See? you're the only one in next. Ooh, nah, nah. That's a good right. start. Right. Right. So, so how yeah, do you I'll, do that? They think about that. Or incorporate that in there. Because you, 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 you want to get a stock market pregnant. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. So it could produce, That's true. You know what I mean? With like triplets and shit and just keep popping it. <laughs> you got to keep shooting the club up, right? Plenty keep shooting the club. <laughs> boom, boom. No, don't Dropping say that. Get used to this club getting shot <laughs> yeah. up. No, but it? I'm talking about the stock market. It's different. Yeah. You go up in there. Flashback. Right. You slide up in there and spray it up. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight, nine months, some shit popping. Wham, wham, wham. You just have a little army. But real talk, that's how you want it. That's yeah. really how you want it. You want to be able to, you want to be able to go into that stock market and yeah. just put your seed everywhere in that stock market. He was raised. You want to be able to fuck this. You see, you call this up. You want to be able to put your stuff in this stuff. Plan to see all this. You try to be politically correct. At the end of the day, that's how the right. game is, though. But like, mm-hmm. like, like. All right, so they come in here. They don't know shit about the stocks. Right. What's the first step that you teach them in your in, in your course? What's the first thing that you teach them? I teach them support and resistance. Right. I teach them support and resistance, and I use Serena Williams and Venus Williams to, t- to demonstrate support and resistance. And how you do that? So, so basically, for example, I want you to think about Serena on this side of the court and Venus on this side of the court. Every time the ball goes towards Venus, that's the stock market going up. Every time it comes towards Serena, that's the stock market going down. And it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually, one, some, somebody's going to score. Either Venus or Serena's going to score. And that's kind of how I break down uh, support and resistance. That's the witness number one because I got nine witnesses. You know, the Bible says everything should be confirmed by for two or three witnesses, right? Mm-hmm. So I got in my, in my stock option course, I got nine witnesses that I take everybody through. And those nine witnesses will take you to the promised land. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. So you make a good motherfucking pastor too, man. <laughs> yeah, pastor R and B. Because the Lord said yeah, he, he, he put it down. But listen, once again, I need y'all to get that free course. Y'all need to text CYC to eight three three four seven four forty one seventy four eight three three four seven four forty one seventy four. Now, C Jack, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know this program that you created, right? Yep. How many levels is inside of this free course? Free course. And so, how long do it take? How long do the course take? Yep. Yeah, so the course that you will receive, the free course, you're getting a three-hour course of me going through two of my witnesses. And I'm showing you what you can do if you actually focus in on it. And then I'm giving you three other bonus videos, the R&B psychology trade. I'm breaking. I got another video and I believe with 20-some interviews that I've done. Just so you can kind of get, some feel of, get a feel of the stock market. Because my thing is this. If I can get you to believe that it's possible, that's the only thing you need. Because I'm telling you, once I saw this, I said, holy crap, ain't nowhere in the world. Like I, used to go to, I used to go to sleep, wake up in the middle of the night talking about calls and puts. My wife used to record me with it. <laughs> Talk about calls and puts. So once you Which, actually understand it, you lock Calls in. and puts. Yeah, Explain because that. at the end of the day, when you're making money from home, that is your f- job now. So exactly. you might pop up at 2 o'clock in the morning go to the bathroom. See what that motherfucker do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're up all night on your phone. <laughs> so, I mean, when I see, I trade, I trade spot SBX most of the time, right? So, I, I found one, I got one stop, right? And I trade it all the time. The same way I got my wife, I got one wife. And that's my wife. The same thing I do with SBX. I learn XBX. I learn when it's like it's having its good days, it's bad days, it's great days. And that's how I'm making money off of it. I don't go chasing waterfalls. I use that in the... Uh, Class too. I don't TLC go chasing waterfalls. I'm go chasing all that. Okay. I stick to the rivers and the lakes. This like nigga I'm used, used to. All oh, he used to saying? listen to was old R and B back in the day, man. <laughs> this nigga R and B king, man. <laughs> he had an R and B group. You can tell. Hey, hey, think is <laughs> you had an R and B group. Nah, I had an R and B group. He's, He's a lead singer. singer. Yes, He's a lead singer. <laughs> Larry Love, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That's you how he got his woman singing to her. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I wish I really could sing. I've you be out there. He be out there. Uh, I be on the going stocks out. on the beach with a piano. <laughs> yeah. New York, New York. <laughs> yeah, you see, he can sing. He was R. Kelly vocal coach. The fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, you used to take care of his breath. It's, it's crazy from a nigga that ran karaoke nights in the prison. You know what right? I'm saying? <laughs> that don't even pay him no attention. Shit. But, but 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 the main thing is, before we get out of here, I need you to give him some information and like to just just talk to the people, motivate him, and you know, because people looking at you like, man, you know, how I'm gonna do this and how you right. done it with yourself and what what, what you shift you made in life because you know we be at different departments of right. life and I think everybody need to push and there's a lot of great entrepreneurs out here that's doing anything but everybody had a different direction right. but your direction that you might share with the people might connect with somebody so what do we like to share with them I mean I've seen the whole the thing about it is this and I'll just be completely honest I've seen a lot of stages right I went from throwing parties you know having a couple of dollars throwing parties win some lose some working in corporate America right working at this company for nine years started $11 an hour nine years later I'm at $17 an hour Made six dollar raise in, in nine years. I quit. Damn. I quit that place. Went working at Lowe's, making ten dollars and thirty five cents an hour. Mm. Next thing you know, I used to, I call this my wilderness stage. I'm coming out of Egypt, going into my wilderness stage, right? Next thing you know, I got a job making pretty good money, you know, and all these good things. I actually quit my job. Me and my wife was uh, six months away from getting married. She was my fiance at the time. I came in the house like my man off of uh, Boys in the Hood. Came in the house, started swinging with me alone. Damn. Right. Yeah. 
You know, he was just swinging. Yeah. Seen what I, was, man, I, I love that movie, right? So I start came to the house swinging like near long tears in my eyes, and I can't do it no more. I'm a I'm a grown man feeling like I can't take care of my family. You see what I'm saying? But what I tell people is, is don't listen. Don't give up. Right now is the perfect opportunity for you to make money off of your knowledge. Trade and stock options, I don't need anybody. I don't need anyone to come to me and sell a, buy a product for me. I don't have to go find, a, find somebody to give me a product or market to anybody. I wake up in the morning, open my laptop, and I study my charts, and I go in there and make money. I close my laptop. I say CYC. CYC stands for close your computer. You make your money, you close your computer, go about your day. Mm. And that's what I tell people. You just got to have the knowledge. Okay? That's the main thing. So get the knowledge. Get Once the again, knowledge. man, that's my man C Jack. Go check him out on Instagram at C Jack One Thirty. Also, the name of his you know company is I Want Knowledge. But you get the free course right now. You need to text CYC to eight three three four seven four forty one seventy four eight three three four seven four forty one seventy four. That's close your computer. CYC. Another episode of Million Dollars Every Game. My man C Jack and it's just like that. Right. Shout out to that Temple <laughs> that squad. That nigga was like John Cheney when he was eighty five. The fuck out of here. Temple had a hell of a squad. Aaron uh, McKee. Uh, 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 what's my man that went. Uh, man, this nigga know a couple players. He tried to always. My man that wound up going to the Lakers. Uh, the Eddie, fuck out of yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this question. Now, the Draymond Green, Jordan Poole situation, right? That's a normal type of situation in the NBA locker room. It happens, bro, all the time. No, no, what the fuck I know happened? it happens all lost. the time because I, I got lost. a story about gambling on a plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it went I down. I ain't been watching sports lately. Uh, you know, but let me say this, though. It happens all the time. I seen Draymond the the day before it ca- the video came out, and we, I, you know, so I told him I said you got to go to the young fella and fix that because that's what don't happen. Right. The big homies don't pick on the little homies like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And for me being in these situations and being around the league and being around basketball and teams and locker rooms my whole life, when Jordan pushed him, and this is my assessment from from being around. When he pushed him, he didn't expect Draymond to help no. haul off on him. Like, uh-uh. he pushed him, letting you know, like, come on, you big bro, but you know what I'm saying, get yeah. out of my face. Right. He wasn't expecting Draymond to haul off on him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And where I think Draymond was wrong at, whatever whatever occurred in practice, Draymond is the leader of the team. So right. he has the right to say nine out of ten times. But hitting the little homie, you, you gain nothing from that. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You gain nothing from that because – all that's gonna happen is you're gonna have to go back and tell, look, I was wrong. That's all, and that's what ended up happening. You know what I'm right. saying? And that's what I was telling them the night after, because we was talking about some other stuff. You know what I'm saying? He had a question with me about something I said uh on the interview, and we cleared it up. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he I basically told him, I said, you gotta go fix that with little bro. You know what I'm saying? And he understood that. You know, he, he told him instead because he understands he's the leader of that team. But that never happens. You don't pick on the little homies. You right. you know you gain nothing from that. And yeah. that don't do nothing but, you know, hurt the team. But the good thing about it. That team over there, and that organization is so solid yeah. that if that happened on any other organization, it probably would break the team up. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Steph, Clay, Steve Kerr, they, they got a, such a such a uh, championship aura right. around the organization. Right. They probably can handle anything. They can get past it. Yeah. But the, you ever got into a situation in the locker room? I mean, in the, in the practice? Man, me, my best friend, one of my best friends, man, BD. We used to go out and practice all Brian the time. Brian Davis. Thought that's my best friend in the world. One of my best friends, dog. We talk almost every day. We got it. Wait, hold on. You and BD what? went through it. We didn't, we didn't throw no punches. But, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? In practice, let me tell you one thing about my, my boy, BD. He's probably top three players I played with in yeah. my career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not even close. Tim Duncan. I'm going to go for it. Tim Duncan. No, who the top five players you played with in your with. career? Tim Duncan. Right. Uh, Baron Davis. Mm-hmm. Stephon Marbury. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to go Gerald Wallace. And uh, man. Did I say Jermaine O'Neal already? You, you wasn't see, on the team? You I said Jermaine O'Neal? No, you ain't see Jermaine O'Neal. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say BD? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold up. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Baron Davis. Baron Davis. Jermaine O'Neal. Starberry. Starberry. Ron Artest. Oh, mm, okay. You're definitely Ron. But BD, sometimes uh, Don Nelson will put me and BD on opposite squads on purpose. We'll start together in games, mm-hmm. but just to make the practice. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows BD. Some days he'll show up to practice with a sweatsuit on, with his knee brace over top of the sweatsuit. So that lets us know. This is my best friend. I'm with him every day after practice. We always together. He don't want to be here. So the more he don't want to be here, 
the longer we gonna stay in here. Because mm-hmm. Don Nelson trying to get, you know what I'm saying, trying to get something out of practice mm-hmm. for the next game. BD going half ass, passing the ball slow. I'm talking about do not want to be, he ready yeah. to get it. <laughs> and you know how BD can be, dog. <laughs> So we'll get into it because of that, man. You know what I'm saying? We'll we'll and I start we'll start busting their ass. We'll get to talking shit. Now he'll get serious and start busting our ass. Then they get to the point where we talking shit. Well, it'll look like we get ready to go to blows. Right. But bro, we've been doing this our whole life talking right. shit like this. You know what right. I'm saying? It'll never get to blows. I love you. Right. But we just pushing each other. Right. So that happens all the time. Right. And I think if I got into it with anybody like that, it was BD. Should I got into it with MJ? Mike. Yes. Mike son, Mike signed the shit out of me. But what Jordan? Wait, hold on the fuck up. Wait, you wait. So niggas really talk shit to Mike? Man, let me tell you what happened. So I was playing in Charlotte, right? Um, this is before, you know, the first year I got there, we got to the playoffs for the first time. And it, so MJ loved me for that alone. Right. But when I first got there, it was kind of rocky. You know what I'm saying? I just got traded to <laughs> So we got our ass beat by somebody. And uh, he came in the locker room after the game, just going off on us like we need to get our shit together, right? And I made some little comment or something like that. He ain't say nothing. So he came to practice the next day. Back on that shit. Mm. Yeah, y'all think y'all did something? I'm six. Oh, he's talking about all his accolades. Take my shoes off. Because, yeah, you know, he had gave me, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't just talking to me. He was talking because everybody had his shoes off. But he yeah. had gave me a deal and all that. Yeah. This shit kind of directed to me and Jerry Wallace. Because yeah. we, we the leaders of the team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he going off. Going Mike told off. you to take his fucking shoes off. Damn near. You know what I'm saying? Look at all the all shit I done done. Y'all went to the, I'm just going off on this right to the point where he gets on the second team in practice. And we lose. You lying. You ain't losing 50 years old. Mike, Mike's Mike, too old was Mike. Listen, listen. This was, nigga, this was in 2010. Mike suited up? Dog, he, whatever he had on. He came out there, got on, got on, uh, pushed against the guard, whoever Gerald Wallace was guarding, the three guard, kicked him out and got in that spot and played with the second team. My second team wasn't scrubs now, but he just made, gave them niggas confidence through the roof. And he scored a couple points, you know what I'm saying? Back I, up to, on oh, he, he scored a couple points, and to the point where he talked so much shit afterwards, he grabbed the ball and went dunk one on the way out. Yeah, the true story. Ask anybody that was on my Charlotte team, dog, and he came in there and bust our ass. Tell me as you, did you feel like shit? I, one thing, one thing. Dude, was you like, this old motherfucker nah, hey, just came I, in and did us dirty no, like I, this I, and I, dunked I, I, on the way out? Nah, I'm a real one. I, this is what I told myself. And you can ask my partners when I got home. That's why you the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's why he, I'm wearing hey, the shoes. Hey, yeah. he, he, Mike had to come in. See, the, the, the fire nigga from Port Arthur, Mike came in there talking crazy. He want mama on this motherfucker out of the old way. That shit washed up mm-hmm. now, nigga. I don't know what you said. You washed up now. I want to hear I that shit. I thought we had it. him. Mike show up the next day. <laughs> Take my fucking shoes off, nigga. Hey. You niggas don't deserve to play in my shit. Hey. You niggas deserve Damn, Mike. to play in something else. Fuck off my... Get out. I'm in. It did one. Hey, but, but let me tell you what's crazy, though. Joe, that's let me tell you what's crazy, though. We went on a run. I had one of the best years of my career after that. We made the playoffs, all that. We had we finished the league, number one defense in the league. Mm. You know what I'm saying? From that moment on, we took off. So he knew what he was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's more reason from basketball, from him being the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? He knew how to get to us. He told y'all niggas, y'all can't guard me, nigga. I'm 51. And we turned up. After that. They like, damn, our defense ain't shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's a hell of a joint, man. Thanks. I ain't never heard Mike came in the locker room cooked you niggas. Who was who was y'all starting for? Uh me, Raymond Felton, Gerald Wallace, Boris Dial, and uh Tyson Chandler or um uh I think that was the starting five. Man, oh man, shout out to all the niggas that got cooked by a 51-year-old Mike. Yeah, we got cooked. We got cooked. <laughs> Fuck him y'all and, up. Him and uh, DJ Augustine was going to work on us. Oh, yeah, DJ got yeah, game, though. Yeah, DJ Augustine mm. was lighting our ass up. Yeah. Shout out to another one of our team, Jordan Brothers. See, Charlotte, that was my team back in the day. Larry Johnson was down there, Muggsy Bogue and them. Oh, you know, shit. what? Fuck <laughs> up, man. This one, Larry was grandma. He had the Converse deal. This, Larry got that money first. I think he got like a hundred million before anybody. This nigga, he man. just sell he was grand by mom. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I deal with different teams based on like sometimes I used to. Go, I ain't gonna front. Back in the day, I used to deal with teams based off who had the best jersey. Then it was based off. Then it went to if you win a chip, you was my team. We leave it all the bullshit. Yeah, I heard, I heard you say that before. Yeah, I don't play no games. I don't. I don't like. We not going sugarcoat the shit. 
Um, Sacramento Kings, they win. That's my team. I'm not. I'm not. I deal with winners. I ain't well, fucking. We know Sacramento ain't winning shit. <laughs> the motherfuckers. Did they ever win a chip? No. That ain't winning nothing. What Sorry. teams never won a chip? Oh, it's a couple. What's a couple? Which ones? Atlanta the Hawks. Did the Hawks win? Hawks won back in the day. I thought. No, Hawks never won no motherfucker. Hawks never day. won. Hawks never won one. The Clippers. The Clippers never oh, won Clippers, one. Clippers for sure. Ain't well, won. the Knicks ain't won one in so long. So the Knicks. The Supersonics never won one. It ain't no Supersonics. No That's more. a team, bro. I'm a, I'm a historian. Man, That's you know, a team. You got them teams that came in late, like OKC. And Jersey shit like never that. won one. No, the Nets never won one. No, the Nets did win one back in the day with Doc. I think. I don't, don't make me lie. I don't yeah, know. I think they did. In the ABA. Yeah. 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 Before Milwaukee, Doc came Milwaukee to the Sixers, he won one at the Nets. I think. Milwaukee, Milwaukee won back in the day. Milwaukee, San Antonio with, uh, won. With, with, Chicago with, won. With Kareem. Yeah, won a couple. The Sixers won. Oscar Robinson. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's a few teams that ain't won. Oh, that. did the Sixers win? It's a few fucking loser cities out there. Did the Sixers win one? Yeah, we won one. Fuck oh. you mean? That wasn't my team then. Huh? Wasn't around. Utah never won nothing. The Jazz? Yeah, I don't want them to ever win nothing. They why, did that so bad. Why would Utah did? Man, so I don't know if y'all remember that. Was so, Carl still playing? Nah, when we when we beat Dallas in the first round, when we beat Dallas in the first round, it was the number one seed. Mm -hmm. We beat them in the first round. We played Utah the second round. Utah worked. worked. Man, game on TNT, bro. This is how I know the, the league did not fuck with me. This man got a whole, you know, I've been in that bra shit and I've been in the shootout yeah, yeah. shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying, before that. This dude is under the goal with a life-size cut out of me with my face in a jail suit, just shaking it under the goal. I'm like... If that was any star in the league and they did that, y'all would immediately take that out of camera view. But my whole family saw that, dog. Damn. And then and the shit that they were saying to you, so I'm like, man, I never, I never root for them or, or, or wish anything good on that team. Because they allowed that shit to go on. What mm -hmm. they be saying to you? That racist shit. Yeah. Nigga, I, man, ask anybody. You heard, you heard a number of players over the last couple of years speak on shit about the fans in Utah. Even Russ had a problem. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this ain't no secret, bro. This is definitely no secret. And that is a prime example. I guarantee you, if they, if Utah would have went to any other arena and somebody would did that to one of their players, they would have had that shit taken down. They it's in the, in the playoffs, jail, bro. In it's the in the play. playoffs. Mm. And I end up, I end up uh, getting, into, uh, uh, getting back in touch with the dudes through social media a couple years ago. He still got the motherfucker. I signed it for him after the game. So you embraced it. Fuck it, huh? I, you know. He was walking off the court. Nigger. Now, he didn't say nigger. He, no. had, he had the, <laughs> yeah. the nigger that had the thing. But I'm saying, no. you said they crowd races and shit. Who? Well, okay, so what's the worst crowds? It's Utah's the worst for me. I, everywhere else, I get love. I got love everywhere else. Everywhere else. Everywhere else, I got love. Except for Utah. Utah, the only place I didn't get no love. They vicious, huh? I didn't get no love. I'm talking about not at all. Not one ounce of love. Everywhere else was super love. I'm talking about anywhere else I played and any city I played against, it was love. Yeah. And very few can say that. Damn. Mm. Man, I'm still fucked up. Jordan cooked you, though. Yeah, Jordan, I mean, Jordan I came shit. in and barbecued If it's going to be anybody, it's going to be the GOAT. How you going to have them young-ass legs don't let an old nigga? But I can't say that because I'm old. I'll be cooking this shit out my camera, man. I can't, say, I, can, I, I, I can't say he had 20 points, and I can't say he scored on me, but he was a factor. Enough to keep talking his shit. He won. He won. That, yeah. That's, that's, point blank. That's all that matters. That's he crazy. won. Yeah, we ain't talking about nothing else. <laughs> it's the winner locker room and it's the loser's no, locker yeah, room. Yeah, we was in the loser's and locker room. The winner locker room never want to hear what the fuck's going on in the loser locker room. We could have did this better. We should have did that. I told you the double team. We, we don't want to hear that, yeah, shit, that man. shit, man. We won, man. The fuck is y'all doing, man? Close the motherfucking doors. Close it up, baby. <laughs> But listen, man, we got stack in the motherfucking building, man. Stack five. We appreciate you for all pulling up smoke. on a stack. Yeah, shout out to all the smoke, man. All really the smoke. doing they fucking thing. One thing about me and Wallow, man, you know, we you. shout out all the motherfucking podcasts that's coming up, that's doing they thing, that's already there, that's the top elite. We don't get These fuck. motherfuckers elite. We, when, we, when we see you elite, we see you coming up, We whatever stage you at, mm -hmm. we recognize you, man. We salute you, man. But we seen y'all journey, y'all rise to the top was fast. Crazy. It was around. We did the same thing around the yeah. same time. Yes, we did. We talked about it when we had y'all on the show. On that shit. On that shit was y'all shit was was fast. So 
Keep going up, man. Shout out to Matt too. You know what I mean. Shout out to Matt. I cooked Matt one time on the court. No, you didn't. Oh, man. It's not fucking lying. If you man. listen, you don't have to score, but if you do a you move, not, you, you, you do not kick, cook. If Matt. you do Matt a is move, the NBA champion, one of the best defenders. Listen, if you do a move, or do you let me just say this. Do that. Uh, let, let me ask you a question me, though. Uh, do you don't think I get a basket on Matt? I don't know, Gil. That's a cook. I can get a basket on Matt. I, 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 I mean, I'm not saying you can't. But I'm just talking about one basket. NBA players, defense is different no, than no, no, regular no, no, niggas. No, 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 I'm not no regular nigga, I'm, though. I'm a nigga that was supposed to go to the league. No, you wasn't. But you're my, not going. My shit derailed. Oh, oh, oh. So like it's, you're if, not. If, if, look, look, look. If, if he playing half ass defense, you might. But if he's serious, I don't think so, bro. Stack. I've seen Matt Stack. shut some of the best that, boys down. That's though. young Stack. Matt. Matt got them old Stack. ass knees yeah. now. See, I'm saying Matt. I ain't saying me. I'm cut. No, listen. Let me go Matt ahead. needs to play. I'm cut. Let me clear Forty two thousand games between elementary school, yeah. Yeah. college, I mean, and the NBA. Them motherfucking knees ain't. They don't. They don't. Them ain't, they this. don't. They don't move the same. Cause I tweak the shit out them joints. Cause let me straighten this out. <laughs> I lean one way and lean. Well, you know how it is. You lean one way, bring that motherfucker back. Wham! Hold with that. Them, that knee, yeah, let me, him, bro. Hey, stack. Let me bro, straighten this out. Him. Let me straighten this out, stack. What? <sighs> Stop lying. You wasn't going to the league. Cause yes, I was, nigga. You know you I'm the hood savior, nigga. Hold, hold, you know hold, I'm the hood hold, fucking savior. Hold, hold, I was stack. supposed to go to the league. Ah, this nigga, <laughs> you, this nigga went. First to, of all, let me just on, say that you could Google me, cuz, bro. All, right, all you cuz, gotta do is Google cuz, me. Cuz, you pull cuz, my, cuz, you pull my. You went to, you went to. Listen, cuz. You can listen. Just listen. Oh, you, he you asked went Rashi to, Wallace. Call Rashi Wallace. No, no, no. Call him. You, listen, you already know he said no. The Gilly was that nigga. Just listen. We so played at high school together. Hold up. Yes. Stat. Hey, stat. We grass? played it. No, we played against each other. I oh, went to Franklin. Right. I went to the. The first of all, let's just say this. Let's keep it real. <laughs> I, I went to the Philadelphia mecca of high schools. I went to the high school that sent everybody to the NBA. Not you. I went there and started. <clears throat> As a young nigga, with nobody starts as a young nigga. What are you talking about? Let's be for real. Uh, then Gratz started sending niggas to the league. But before Gratz, it was Franklin. We was the Mecca. We sent everybody to the NBA, nigga. When I came out, the college coaches were sitting there with the motherfucking hats on. I'm the nigga went to high school every day and was a stack of motherfucking letters, man. I don't want to hear that shit you talking, man. You hear me? You was upstate getting your ass pinched, man. Niggas kissing you on the neck, blowing in your head and all that shit. I was out here putting in real fucking numbers, I'm going to say man. this, though. I'm going to say this. Fuck is he talking about? You was upstate. And them, niggas and them, and them situations. Rap, wrestling in the showers and all that shit. Let me say this. You missed a lot out here, cuz. That's all I'm going to tell you. And then you missed my whole high school career because you was locked up as a fucking juvenile, no, I wasn't, too. But I'm going to say this, though. You couldn't come to the game. The whole family was at the Can fucking games. Can I say games. this, though? You was in jail. Can I say this? All right, now you said anything. Number one, them situations that you speak about in jail, I already explained them. They didn't go the way that people said they did. <laughs> number two, number two, this nigga went to a walk on couch. <laughs> How the fuck he had a game? Walk he on. went to a walk on couch, a Division Five. For a, a Division a Z walk on couch. How the <laughs> fuck you going to the NBA? <laughs> this nigga tripping. Like, like, like Stack, he always threw hey, out that shit in. Hold on, man. Fuck, hey, listen, man. He, he a fucking hater, man. You talking like he went D1? Yeah, we, he, a fucking he went hater, to a walk on couch. Anyway, first of all, I got recruited by, I got recruited by, down the street. I got recruited by a shitload of ahead? D1s. Let's just keep it real. I, I still got the letters, nigga. Fuck is you, you talking about? Walk my mama college, keep guys. everything, so nigga. Did, 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 man, let me just tell you this, man. Man, let me just tell you, it is just like that. He's sitting on the couch anyhow. Let me just tell you something. It is just like that. Did he go to DeVry? No, it, it was worse than that. It was a joint. It was a joint that you could just. <laughs> you sitting on the couch anyhow. Yeah, it was a joint. I'm trying for the basketball listen, team. Listen, listen, yeah. <laughs> he went in there. Listen, hey, listen. The school had one dorm. One dorm. It was 35 right, people that went to the went school. To the ride, man. Fuck out of here, man. Y'all niggas sick, man. Nigga went to a walk on college. Hey, Cause he always slandered y'all yeah, was supposed to go to the league. Fuck was you supposed to go to the league? <laughs> what league was you supposed to go to? That nigga said the Bra Institute. I'm done, man. And it's just like that. Right. <laughs>